Thank you for this wonderful brother with a heart for the lost people in Thailand. Bless him as he comes to us to bring your word and testimony and that he opens our eyes and our thoughts and our minds and our prayer lives, we hope, uh, for Thailand and the people that you love there. Because you're not wishing any should perish, but all to come to eternal life and to be a part of the body of Christ. And we, we praise you for Zdenia coming to share with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, crap. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I would like to first say that I'm very happy to be here with you in this day, in this very special day. I'm very happy that we can uh, celebrate God's name in this amazing church with such amazing people. So thank you for the invitation to be here with you today. And I will maybe a little bit more introduce myself and my family. Uh, again, my name is Zdenda, but if it's too much difficult for you, uh, Thai people call me Dan. So you can just use this nickname and call me Dan. It's, it's much, more, much more easier. And I have a beautiful wife named Adriana, and we have one daughter named Mali. Um, and we are missionaries who work in Thailand for already more than two years. If you will compare it with your pastor, it's nothing. <laughs> 28 years, right? It, it's crazy. So we are in Thailand just two years. And I would like to share with you something about this amazing country, about Thailand, about my family about our work there and mostly in everything what I will say I would like to point on God and how amazing how great our God is and I decided to divide this not maybe preaching but maybe more testimony into three parts the first part will be uh, about how God called us to a mission. The second part will be about Thailand. And the third part will be some short testimony from our life in Thailand. So let's start. How God called us to a mission. Our story is pretty simple. But in the time it was also very difficult and hard for us. It started many years ago. Now I'm 29 years old and we are married maybe six years, six years. And this started bef before we get married. And in our home church in Pilsen, we are from Pilsen, uh, we met one missionary, one guy who shared his heart for mission, for serving in different nations in a different parts of this world. And this guy, he asked us, like the whole church, if we can choose one country and just pray for the country. Just pray, nothing more. And if we can continue praying for the country in the next days, months, and years. And we did it. And it wasn't Thailand. It was China. We chose China like the country and we pray for China for many, many months. But I think that over, over the time many people just forgot or stopped to pray for the country, for China. But we continue, continue to pray for China and in our mind was that it's the least what we can do for the country. It's the least what we can uh, do for China and how to support the people there, the Christian there, the church there. And then we get married. Then my wife finished our medical school. And suddenly we need to decide what we will do next. And in that time, 
I read one passage from Bible, from the uh, book of Matthew, from chapter 9, where it's written, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into his harvest field. This very touched my heart. And since I read this, I was decided to go to China. Just because I read this passage, because I read this part of Bible, suddenly I was thinking why we couldn't just go to China and see how it works there, how the people are there, and spend some time in China, maybe just a few months, maybe half year. And we started to discuss it with some people from our church, from our home church, and from mission organizations. And the, the people didn't trust us. The people just saw that it's some stupid joke. We were too young. And we didn't have any experience from mission. Many people ask us, do you know that China is a communist country. Do you know that it's a pretty dangerous country for Christians? That it's impossible to just go there and be missionary and share gospel there? Do you know it? A lot of people didn't trust us, even in our home church. And we just spent a lot of time in prayers and were praying for this. And after two years, Really, after two years, some people start, started to trust us in the whole thing, in the whole idea, and support us. So we, we start some preparation for going to China. Not to Thailand, but to China. After a few months, we had planned tickets. We were prepared to go. Some team of missionaries in China was waiting for us. And then COVID came. Then COVID came and we stayed in Czech Republic another two years. It was crazy. It was hard for us. The same people who trust us, who support us, they start to speak, started to speak with us in, in the way like, it was just some test from God. It's not the way for you. And suddenly we felt, we, we felt like, what is the God's plan for us? Should we stay in Czech Republic? Or should we wait? We're praying a lot for, for, for this and we decided to stay faithful the whole idea to go to China and we were waiting two years during the COVID. We lived in small rental just with few boxes, with few things, ready to go to China anytime. After two years, some people ask us if we don't want to change the country, that maybe it's some way how to go to mission. And we decided that maybe it's the right way. So we again pray for it. We pray a lot. And then uh, one lady from Thailand, personal coordinator for, for the team there, she sent us a message that we can come to Thailand whenever we want. So we just bought our plane tickets and went to Thailand. And it's our story how we get to Thailand. It was almost four years, maybe more than four years, of preparation for going to mission. And very crazy time for us. Living with boxes, just with few things, and try to convince many people around us that it's not some bad joke, but it's really the plan of God for us. And we want to go there and we want to serve the people there. And we recognize that maybe we don't understand every time the plans of God, because our plan, originally the plan was going to China. 
but God, God has got a different plan and maybe it was just some way how to prepare us, how to push us to go somewhere, to go to mission. So now we are in Thailand and uh, we lived in a city called Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya is in a central Thailand. It's approximately one hour from Bangkok. And Thailand is an amazing country. We love Thailand. But as every country, also Thailand, has two faces. The first face of Thailand looks like big cities, big super modern cities. It's not hard to find some people who speak English. It, there is many options and it's beautiful country. You will probably know the tropical islands, delicious food, spicy food, very spicy food because Thai cuisine is based on chili. Yeah. And, <laughs> and maybe if you are, if you like sports, you will know Muay Thai, Thai box. The second part of Thailand, the second phase of Thailand, are small villages in uh, in mountains or uh, in a uh, in jungle. Uh, the second phase of Thailand. Uh, is that Thailand is Buddhist country. So there, there is many temples. Temples are everywhere. And not just temples, but also altars for spirits, for demons. And there is just few Christians. Maybe just one percent of Christian from the whole population. And most of the people from the one percent of Christians are not Thai, but those people are usually part of some hill tribes or foreigners. And our work in Thailand is to help the local church there to build some healthy church and share gospel there. And how I said, we live in Ayutthaya and we t um, in Ayutthaya we are not alone, we have a team there, a team of missionaries, and we have a lot of different projects what we do in the city. One of our projects, what we do is working with, with children uh, from poor families, from very poor families. These kids go to work instead of going to school. Some of these kids are just 10 years old, but it's usual that they have to go to work. There is a big chance that in the future of those kids, they will be sold in a sex trade, or they will sold drugs, or will have to work in very harsh conditions. And we try to help them. So we work with them and we try to teach them their language, Thai language. We try to teach them math, uh, how to count, uh, and share, share, gospel, share gospel among them and among their families. And it's very hard work, and sometimes, sometimes the time after after the work is very sad when we see these kids and their life, and sometimes we're. We are just crying for this kid because it's hard to see so small children and know how hard is their life. Another part of our work in Thailand is helping in local schools. We have one project and we try to reach students and teachers in a public Thailand school, elementary schools. And the schools are usually very uh, strict and otherwise closed places. The schools are Buddhist. It means that even uh, the smallest children, when they will come to the school 
for the first time they are learning how to worship spirits, how to worship demons. It's part of their education. So we we are going to to those schools and we are teaching English, music, art activities and some other things and through these things we are trying to share gospel among those students, those kids and the teachers. For many of them it's first time when they meet met, uh, some Christians and usually they know nothing about Jesus, about God. It's normal in Ayutthaya. People don't know about God, almost nothing. It's like something total new for them. And we try to help the local church and I would like to say that also the work in the church is usually hard for us because the only churches that grow in Thailand are international churches or churches in big cities but churches in small towns in the villages. These churches are usually very traditional and very small. So it's very hard soil and it's very hard to spread their gospel, teach them about the Bible, uh, try to explain them some Bible stories. So our work in Thailand, our life in Thailand is about sharing gospel among the the people there in Ayutthaya to different kind of projects and even when it is very hard and we need to use Thai language because in Ayutthaya no one speaks in English so we need to speak Thai and Thai it's nice language but it's it's hard language it's very hard language and but we love it we love it even when we have many difficult times we love it because we know that God called us to a mission to be in Thailand to be in Ayutthaya we know that it's the place where God wants us and it's the right place for us so even when it's difficult when it's hard we try to just trust God that he will guide us he will lead us and that it's part of his plan. And the last thing what we do in Thailand is something what we call open house. It's our house in Ayutthaya. And when we moved to Ayutthaya, we decided that we want to open our house for our neighbors. In practical way, it means that every day, really every day we have house full of children of our neighbors. We don't have any privacy. We don't have any free time. Because when we come back to our home from uh, our work, from, the, from uh, the project, we have another ministry in our living room. Like this? Like this, exactly. <laughs> And the open house is something what is really in our heart. We really love it. Yes, we don't have time for ourselves. We don't have time uh, like for rest or when we want to rest, we can't stay at home. We have to go somewhere else. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's very nice just to see those kids and see their smiling and has an opportunity to speak with them about God. And it's amazing way how to get, how to reach our neighbors, how to reach their families. So we really love it. And during the time in Thailand we had a lot of, we have a lot of amazing, I think that amazing testimonies about what God is doing in our life and through the work there. But one of the biggest events in our life in Thailand was when our daughter, Armali, was born. 
because she was born in Thailand. We left Czech Republic as two and come back as three. And now we will uh, go to Thailand already like four. Yeah. But another baby will be again born in Thailand. But in that time, when we found out that my wife is pregnant, many people didn't understand why we stayed in Thailand. A lot of people told us, go back to Czech Republic. It will be difficult for you. It will be very hard. It will be expensive for you. You can't speak Thai language. So it will be just a hard time. And they were true. Because as Czech people, we are used to use medical insurance for everything. And in Thailand, we had to pay for everything. So it was expensive. It was very expensive for us. It was hard for us because uh, we didn't speak Thai in that time. And they have a different system in the hospitals. And a lot of people just try to, try to get us back to Czech Republic, even from uh, the team in Thailand, our colleagues, uh, our church in uh, Czech Republic, in Pilsen. A lot of people just didn't understand why we stayed in Thailand. But what was in our mind was, we just arrived to Thailand. We can't go back to Czech Republic. If we will go to, back to Czech Republic, we will uh, stay another few months, maybe half year, maybe more than half year in Czech Republic. Then we will return to Thailand and start again. It was something... We didn't want to do this. We're just thinking that for Thai people it's normal to give birth in Thailand. So we can do this also. In that time we uh, remembered one Czech proverb. It's a pretty funny proverb. I'm not sure about the translation, but it's something like where wolves die, Czech people will adapt and survive. And we take this proverb and said, okay, it will be our motto for living in Thailand. And we decided to stay in Thailand. And in the time I read Psalm, Psalm 23, there is written, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in great pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I knew that God will just protect us. He will just guide us. If we will stay faithful, and if we will stay faithful his plan and stay in Thailand, he will just protect us, he will help us, and everything will be okay. So we decided to stay in Thailand. And we decided that our daughter will be born in Thailand. And yes, it was very difficult, very hard time for us. Uh, it caused many tears. And in the end, our Malay had to be born by Caesar section because the doctor said that maybe she will not survive. But we saw that since the time when we, when uh, Adriana get pregnant, since the time God was using this whole situation for opening doors to the Thai people. Because Thai people love children and small babies and pregnant women. So God opened us doors through this pregnancy to Thai people. And it was it was also such an amazing time because it was like a miracle. The people, the people usually came to us just because they were wondering about Adriana's pregnancy and then about Mali. So God used this whole situation to open doors for our ministry in Thailand. And even now, 
and Mali is growing in Thailand and she is blonde cute girl who is growing among um, black haired Thai children she is uh, like unicorn there because in Ayutthaya are not white people are not people from West Western countries but it's such amazing tools and today we are very happy that we stayed in Thailand even when it was difficult when it was hard we are happy that we decided to stay and Mali is healthy she's okay she's totally okay she's totally a healthy child so it's our testimony from Thailand and what we do in Thailand and I would like to just encourage you through this our lives life testimony just trust Lord he promised promised many times that he will guide you, he will protect you, he will take care about you. Just trust him. I don't know what is in your life. I don't know if your life is a total happy life or if you, if you have some difficulties or some hard time, but just trust him. Speak with him. Just pray. Tell him everything. Really, everything. Sometimes when I was upset, when I was, when I was feeling like really down, I think that no one wants to hear my praying in the time in, with God. But it was needed. Just pray him, just tell him everything. And he never left us. Every time he guides us and he leads us through all the difficulties, and I know that he he is doing this in the life of all of you. So just just trust him and pray and be faithful. Amen. Amen. Adya, Mali, we need you. This is our time when we uh, have a prayer point each week, and it can be about a ministry, a mission, a culture, country. Um, here they come. <laughs> um, but this time it's going to be and for obvious reasons, after we got all this information about their ministry, their story, the prayer point is this family and Thailand. And so I want to uh, give the mic to um, Adya this time. And by the way, I just feel like I have to tell you, uh, Adya has been a close family friend of ours for many years. And she is the best and the only babysitter we ever had who could handle all three of our boys. <laughs> And so we praise the Lord that she went to Thailand as a missionary. And, you know, there's another side. Adya, if you ever come back, <laughs> move near us. Okay, so do you have some prayer requests you could share with the, the people? Yeah. So, hi, I'm Adriana. And uh, our pray prayer point is that we are going back to Thailand, right? And uh, since we are here for four and a half months now, and we love our family and our grandmas, grandpas, and we will be missing them a lot. So please pray that uh, Mali will get again used to Thai and all of the different regime, and uh, for us that we can serve well as a family and find also time for ourselves to stay like in a close relationship with God because in different countries you all know it's harder than in your own language right and we are going to Thai speaking church so it's even it's like third language we have and it's not that that easy to to be close to God like in our <laughs> it's Krupka it's not the bad Czech world for it <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so please pray for our family and our ministry and all of our all of our neighbors which are close to us and we, oh, we are spending a lot of time with their kids and yeah, so please pray that it's not just about nice relationship but about God too. Thank you. Uh, I think it's everything. Yeah. I can think of one more. Um, and that is, they're faith missionaries. They're dependent upon the support of people who believe in what they're doing and that God's put on their hearts to give. And so if you're interested in giving toward their ministry or even tithing your life to Thailand, please, after the service, come up and speak to them. Um, I don't know, maybe there's someone out here that's saying, Lord, are you sending me? And I want to encourage you, submit that to God, pray about it, because maybe he is, right? We're his followers, his disciples. Jesus himself was sent, wasn't he? He was comfortable in heaven, and he was sent to this mission field here on earth. So, Father, I just thank you for all that you've done through this testimony and this worship and this service today. And thank you, Lord, for all that was done last week in those kids. And thank you, Lord, that you are moving uh, in our lives and in this nation and in Thailand. Lord, open our eyes to see what you're doing and open our hearts to be willing to jump in and to play our part in your work, in your ministry, and in your church, and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Apostle Peter, his uh, blessing at the end of one of his letters was, was simply, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's my heart for you today, that you would grow in the grace and the knowledge. He didn't say just the knowledge, but he proceeded with the grace. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.